Uh, in North Vancouver, we did uh, a few years ago, and it was astonishing. It was something like 700 times its actual physical space because mostly of energy consumption. However, it's starting to change. You've probably heard of the LEED um, principles for building construction. It's an energy efficient design process that's been developed for some years now, and some hospitals are starting to use it. It's absolutely astonishing how much energy can be saved. Choosing therapies that are easy on the environment. We're so sold into pharmaceutical agents, which are novel molecules. If nothing else, that's what they are. They're different from what the natural world produces. That we never think that once we've finished consuming them, we do that famous thing I showed in How to Shit in the Woods. We excrete them. We, they come out in our urine and our feces and our sweat and our body parts that we leave lying around. And they are very, very harmful. In many, in many cases. Sometimes they're innocent, but most of the time they're not. Uh, people all know about Viagra, but don't realize that Viagra is a, uh, it's an enzyme inhibitor, and it has an enormously important effect in many animal species. And it doesn't give them greater sex appeal, let me tell you. It actually kills them, which is not exactly what was intended by the manufacturer, and it's not what most physicians think they're doing when they foolishly prescribe it to their patients. I say foolishly because I've hardly ever done it. It's not a bad idea to make it clear to your patients who come to your office or your hospital where your head is at. You don't have to be this opaque, neutral, because you're not anyway, neutral sort of impartial, dispassionate professional. You're a human being and you live on the planet. And everybody knows that. And if you want to have people believe it, I'm sorry, it won't work. You are somebody with a position. If you are neutral, as they say, if you're acting sane in a crazy world, then you've really lost it. And if there are crazy things going on in our world, and you see them, and you don't act like you notice them, it's the old, you know, 6,500 ton gorilla in your living room that you're walking around. I think this is sort of a fundamental commitment that all of us have throughout the world. We have to start recognizing that there are no barriers and divisions. In fact, there used to be an organization called Beyond Borders. Is that what it's called? Beyond Borders. And, it, and it, it was based on photographs from space showing that when astronauts flew, they never saw the, they couldn't see the 49th parallel. <laughs> it didn't show up on the map because there was no map. It was just a planet. All of us are united together. So, the final thing this leads one to, if you have the stomach for it, or if you're inclined, or if you feel strongly enough, is that you actually state in public what your position is on an issue that you think is important. And I call it this because, for many physicians, we're so habituated to working in the sheltered environment of the hospital, or our office, or a clinic, where everybody's trying to be nice to us, and we really, really want them to do that because it's harder when you go out in the world and people sometimes say, I agree, but then, actually, no, I don't agree. Our patients don't usually say that to us, although they should. They should be saying, if they don't agree, that they do not, instead of pretending they do. So, when you go into a community and you raise your voice on some issue, you're out of your comfort zone. You don't get paid big bucks for doing it. In fact, you may have a few patients say, I'll never come see you again. You may have a whole bunch of other patients who come and say, I don't know anything about you, but I'd like to come. That sounded good. You risk challenge, especially from colleagues. You can't go to a special school. And this is the part that really bothers physicians. You see, you're sometimes working with people in a field where you know way less than they do. And yet you're the wise doctor. How could this be? Well, psychologically, of course, it's ridiculous to think that's unusual, but for many of us, that creates problems. We're so used to the fact that we are considered the expert that when we're not, and blatantly are not, it bothers us enormously. So, just remember, you're not alone. There's lots of documentation. There's uh, people who've done what you're thinking of doing already. There are physicians groups in particular they're non-physician groups, and here's some documentation. 
This is a program that was developed by the Ontario College of Family Physician, Physicians and the Joint Commission Task Force for the Great Lakes. It's still available. It's a, it's a whole program on how the environment and our health intersect. There's groups like this. This is, a, this is a group that did a body burden study, the Environmental Working Group. Great study. You can get data from this and you can flaunt it. It's fairly accurate information. There's this group you may have heard of. There's this group which was a, in some ways a parent group. And there's a group that's parent of them all, the granddaddy group. There's this group. Some of you have seen images of this fabulous organization around the world. They do a lot of stuff. that they, They're intensely involved with environmental and social justice stuff everywhere they go. There's this group. I won't dwell on it. But we did have a wonderful little video on pesticides. It's uh, 10, 10 minutes and 59 seconds exactly. But it gives a really good overview that anybody can understand about the impact of pesticides on human and ecological health. Canadian Coalition for Green Health Care, which CAPE helped to start up. Remember, all these slides are going to be on the website, so you don't have to f fight your way through notes. Healthcare Without Harm, excellent group, coalition, global in nature, based in the States, but it has branches all over the world. You probably heard of this guy. Take home messages. If anybody doubts this, please see me after. <laughs> we have psychiatrists who can help you. Not doing anything is a form of action. Sorry, this is a law of physics. Um, you, you can't be neutral in a colored world. Everything we do has a color, a flavor, a sensation attached to it. You can't be neutral. If you say you're neutral, you're, you're favoring the status quo. You don't have to worry if you go out of your comfort zone because there will be a lot of people there with you. And the other thing that's important to remember is that you've probably been doing something already. You're already started on this particular journey. It just may not be massive public demonstrations. It may be something private or something in your own family. I'm just going to show three slides of the thing I'm involved in. See that yellow square? That thing here? That stands for Smart Centers. There's a large company that's done 185 shopping centers in Canada, wants to build one in the middle of the floodplain of the Salmon River that runs through the town I live in. This is a picture of the area of the floodplain, and this is a picture of the big box 400,000 square foot shopping center they want to set up. Out of the woodwork, 1,400 citizens in our town came forth and said, this is ridiculous and crazy, and now they've come back and we're going to work on them again. It's this kind of little issue. In a little town of 17,000, it's, it's the old thing they used to talk about all the time, acting locally, thinking globally. Your local could be your own backyard. But if you do something, you'll be helping all the rest of us. Thank you. <laughs>